Chaldeans, plans don't go as, as, as expected. So while we were there, um, 11 p.m. we get there, we're tired, long day, and as we're eating, the, they, they filled the table with food. This family was, wasn't like the most well out there. We were very poor, and um, they did so much for us. We were so grateful to be there. The, the table was filled with mezzah, everything that you can think of. And then they bring out the, the kebab and everything, and we're having a good time. And then we're full. We thought we had dinner. And then we hear, all right, who's ready for the main course? And I look at, I hear like Father David, like a death look. <laughs> so I was like, there's no way I'm going to fit anything back into my stomach right now. And I'm there, and I was like, guys, we're getting ready to leave right now. These people say they're going to put food on the table. It's almost 1 a.m. I can't do this. And as they go into the kitchen, one of the priests pulls me aside. He says, this family has been pre preparing for you guys all day. They have been expecting you, and you're like an honored guest to them. The, the wife, the mother that was preparing everything, she was in the kitchen all day preparing and waiting for you guys just to be here. So just stay and enjoy and receive it and be thankful. And it kind of sent me back. Because the whole time I was there, I was just getting ready to leave. And waiting for the time that I, I could just go and, and sleep in my bed comfortable. And I wasn't thinking about how much was being done in the background for me. So in today's gospel, we see ten lepers. Um, Jesus is going and passing through the city of Samaria. And as he enters the city, he sees ten lepers there. And right away, he says lepers say to him, Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, do anything you can do to heal us. And if you pay attention to the gospel, it says right when he entered the city of Samaria, that's when these people came to see Jesus. Why were they right there? It's because these people were outcasts. Because of their leprosy, because of their skin disease, the law said that you had to be kicked out of the city. You had to be on the outskirts. You couldn't live in the community. So whether they were rich or poor, whether they, they had high social status or low social status, wherever they were, before they were sick, what matters now is that these people have leprosy and they want healing. So Jesus enters the city and the, the common procedure for people that have leprosy, if for one day they get healed, the law of Moses in the Old Testament says that if you get healed on some occasion, it's very rare because it wasn't a common thing. If you get healed, after you get healed, you go and show yourself to the priest in the temple. And after that, he'll examine you. He will give you like a ritual cleansing and then he'll offer a sacrifice for you. But what does Jesus do in this gospel? What does Jesus say to these people? He says, Go and show yourselves to the priest. Before he even heals them, before he even puts their hand to, to do any sort of miracle on them, he says, go and show yourself to the priest. So imagine what these lepers, what's going on in their, these lepers' minds. Imagine, like, their, their fear, their anxiety. Imagine them, like, looking at Jesus and saying, well, how can we show ourselves to the priest if we're not healed yet? That's not the procedure. He's Jesus himself, and they're probably thinking, this guy's leading us into the city right now that we're not welcome to. And so, although they had this anxiety, although they had all this confusion, Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest, and that's what they did. And so this simple act of trust and obedience in Christ, as they were walking, they were healed. But I don't think that's the end of the story. That's not the end of... That's not the main lesson of this gospel today. The main lesson of this gospel today is that ten people were healed that day. Ten lepers were healed that day and one returned and gave thanks to Christ. But 
ask yourselves, who was the person that returned and gave thanks? It was the Samaritan. The Samaritan was a half-breed. He wasn't a full Jew. Jesus says here, he says, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? So it was this foreigner who gave thanks to God, who really probably, it was him that he didn't feel himself that he's entitled to this healing. He didn't feel himself that he deserved this because of who he was, because of where he came from. Entitlement wasn't a thing for this, this guy. And so he returned, and he didn't just give thanks to Christ, but he returned and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, thanking him. So what does this mean for us here today in this church right now? When I was in Iraq, I complained a lot. And I'm here now, and I'm still complaining. <laughs> what does this mean for us here? If it's 10 degrees too hot, maybe we'll double think or, or have a second thought about coming to church on Sunday. Or if maybe the priest, or like me, I'm taking too long in the homily, we might complain a little bit. Honestly, I'm one of you guys. I'm one of the men. I have complaint. Any complaint you hear, I'm the first one. But I think what Jesus is calling us to do is calling us to have the eyes to be able to see what's being given to us. And the eyes to be able to thank God for what He has right now. And not to be feel entitled. And even the sacraments that Christ gives us, the sacraments of confession, we'll walk out of confession and we'll get angry because, I don't know, maybe the line is too long. But if we realize that at every moment of confession when the priest raises his hands in absolution, the blood of Christ is dripping from his hands. And so, brothers and sisters, in the Mass today, how often does the priest say, we raise glory, honor, thanksgiving, and adoration? How many times do we say that in the Mass? So many opportunities to give thanks to Jesus, but how many times do they go and we're not really connected with it? So brothers and sisters, at this moment in the Mass, I'm not asking you 10 years from now to give thanks, but think about yourselves now, what you have to be thankful for. And let's ask for the faith of the Samaritan who was healed. The faith of the Samaritan that when he gave thanks, his faith made him well. That when we come to Jesus today in the Eucharist, he won't be asking us, where were you? But he'll be saying to us, rise and go your way.